Attorney Mike Papantonio is joining me again today. He's also co-host of Ring of Fire Radio. Mike, let's talk a little bit about progressive successes that we've seen and whether they really tell us anything about the long term potential for progressive success. You know, we can look at not at least for the time being pursuing military action in Syria. Larry Summers, Bill de Blasio uh, appearing to be on track to to be New York City mayor. Uh, marijuana legalization, decriminalization is happening increasingly, marriage equality in more states than ever before. Do you think that taken together there is a trend here? Do you think these are temporary successes and there may be more setbacks? Uh, kind of uh, evaluate where the progressive movement stands. Well, I think I think it's an uprising of sorts that is taking place quietly. Uh, the Bill de Blasio situation is a great example. I mean, this is a guy that was he was ran tracking number four. All of a sudden he comes back and he comes out and he says, listen, I'm not going to be ashamed of the fact that I am very left wing. I am very progressive. I, I, I want some dramatic changes. And and he runs on that platform. He tells the wealthy people in in New York, you know what, I'm going to tax you so I can play so I can pay for education. I'm going to tax you so we can have better roads. Uh, and he says we can't continue this tale of two cities, as he puts it. Uh, we can't have the Bloomberg New York dictating what happens to everybody else. And, and then a microcosm, that's exactly what, uh, what the Larry Summers issue is about. I mean, the Larry Summers issue, uh, if you really think about it, David, this is a guy who has had a free pass all the way back to Bill Clinton to operate kind of below the radar screen because nobody understood the damn story. They didn't understand that, yes, when he was out there with Bill Clinton trying to trying to do away with Glass-Steagall, that he was doing that on behalf of, of Robert Rubin in Wall Street. They didn't get the connections. But now people are understanding these connections, and there is somewhat of an uprising taking place. If we step back a little bit, I get emails a lot from my audience about this progressive movement that some have identified as taking place, and they kind of are divided among two, two camps. One camp is this is a sort of movement. There is a, a change coming. There is clearly a shift in the tide and we're going to continue in this progressive direction. The other side is much more skeptical and they say, I don't I don't deny that th this is progress and that these are good things. All of those that I listed at the beginning of this of this interview. However, ultimately, we still have a, a essentially corrupt political system corporate control of every aspect of society, and this is merely a distraction, those issues will not change. Well, I, I kind of, I probably lean more towards your, your, the latter group that says it's, it is somewhat misdirection. We see it constantly in politics. Uh, with this administration, we, we, we've seen it with big social issues, where all of a sudden we're talking about same-sex marriage at the same time that the pharmaceutical industry is taking away our rights to be able to sue them when they create pharmaceuticals that kill us and our family. Uh, we, we, we start seeing issues, uh, uh, we start seeing a misdirection on issues uh, s such as gender or, or wh whatever it may be that are social issues, okay? We pay attention to those social issues that are very important. Don't get me wrong, they're critically important. But they can't be the only thing we pay attention to because when we do that, Wall Street then does get away with what they did, uh, what they tried to do with Larry Summers. Um, the, the, the point is this, there, this is somewhat of a distraction, but the, the good news is that for, it's been a long time since we've thought about the progressive event as a progressive movement. In other words, where women's movements are tied into labor, where labor tied into gender, where gender tied into environmental, where environmental turned into the judicial, uh, to, 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 uh, the judicial process. All of it now is kind of coming together in, uh, in, in a way that I haven't seen in a long time. For too long, we never thought of ourselves as one unified movement like the right did. The crazy right would always think of themselves as this unified movement. The gun uh, industry uh, was always, uh, you know, saddled up with Wall Street. Wall Street was always saddled up with the, with the uh, uh, military complex. Their issues were always, if you're in the fight, we're in there with you. And you never really had that kind of 
continuity with the progressive movement. For example, the Larry Summers issue is a great example. I mean, you had uh, you had now who was one of the big voices that said, you know what, how, how dare you, President Obama, how dare you come forward with this man who, first of all, victimized Brooks Lee Bourne, if you recall, who was warning the entire nation that derivatives were going to cause this burn down, but you let Larry Summers, Robert Wright, and Alan Greenspan go after uh, 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 Brooks Lee Bourne. That's after you were at Harvard and you said that women don't have the capacity to understand science or math. I mean, <laughs> you know, so all of a sudden the women's movement got involved in something that historically would only take place by kind of a small part of the progressive movement that was paying attention to this. Yeah, I find myself really wondering, I, I like I haven't really taken a position on this issue you brought up of the distraction of social issues, because there's no question at all, like you said, that gender equality is absolutely important. All of these other social issues are very important. And at the same time, I recognize that putting energy into those, there's a limited number of hours in the day. Yeah. There's a limited number of dollars that can be spent. And focusing on those issues may not change the fundamental inequality that we see in this country that is growing, the concentration of wealth, et cetera. However, could we say that progressivization of social values could lead to more energy behind changing some of those other things we discussed? Well, it does as long as, you know, there is a part of the progressive movement I call the Birkenstock progressives. And the Birkenstock progressives don't understand the importance of the fact that we're in a fight for our lives. That there's no nicety about this. That yes, we're so pleased when we see some issue that breaks positively on race or gender. We're so pleased by that because that's who we are. But the, the real thugs, the real people we have to confront are on Wall Street. The real people we have to confront are the people who keep pushing forward on this idea of putting money into politics to where the average person on the street has no vote anymore. So it, it only gets to the point to where real change takes place, where we say it's time. It's time to go forward with a constitutional amendment. It's time to put so much pressure on, on money in politics that we see a fundamental change. It's only when you get there, David, that anything meaningful is going to happen. Otherwise, the NRA is still going to keep continue pumping money into, uh, in, into the beltway, and we're never going to get any change on things like gun control. You're going to see the Wall Street is going to pump money into both parties to where both parties are simply, they're, they're, they're trained uh, monkey grinder monkeys, uh, organ grinder monkeys for both sides. There's no way you can intelligently have these people in the beltway focus on what matters. So you got to get the money out. And when the progressive movement, when there's continuity in the progressive movement and they all come together and they say, okay, these other issues are important, but let's, let's cut the head off of the monster. And the monster is money in the beltway. That's the monster. Until we all get there and say, you know, all these other things, they're, they're important, but we got to go after the heart of this, of this demon. All right, attorney Mike Papantonio, co-host of Ring of Fire Radio. Don't miss it on Free Speech TV now as well. Great as always to have you on. Thank you, David.